This is your Catholic Daily Journal for Sunday, January the 27th, 2019. Today in 1343, Pope Clement VI issued a fairly uninteresting document called Unigenitus, in which he explained the Roman Catholic practice of indulgences. That document didn't really get any attention until 200 years later, when a young monk named Martin Luther raged against it in public debate in Germany. Indulgences extend from the words of Jesus in Matthew 16, 19. Jesus tells Peter that he is giving him the keys to the kingdom, and whatever Peter binds or looses will be bound or loosed in heaven. And as such, the Pope has authority, within specific boundaries, to establish religious law. An indulgence does not forgive sins. Confession does that, and it's illegal and punishable in the church for a priest to charge money for confession. An indulgence is a spiritual exercise which is performed in conjunction with confession, holy communion, and the disposition of the soul to be entirely free from attachment to sin. If, for example, someone makes a pilgrimage to Santiago de Compostela, they make their confession, they receive holy communion, they're genuinely free from attachment to sin, their time in purgatory will be dramatically reduced. Certainly there's a lot of scripture to cite and theology to express in order to explain that further, but that's what an indulgence is. Clement VI never intended what Pope Leo X did by selling indulgences. That's a big problem. Still, today is the day in 1343 when the Pope put forth a formal explanation. Today in 1967, a tragic accident with an explosive bolt on an exit hatch in the prototype Apollo vehicle caused the deaths of astronauts Gus Grissom, Ed White, and Roger Chaffee. Their deaths very nearly ended the Apollo program. The incident and the surrounding effects of it are covered brilliantly by flight director Gene Krantz in his book, which is a must-read, Failure is Not an Option. The Apollo program's response to that accident was a model of human concern, good science, and genuine teamwork. The men were mourned, the entire project was taken back to the drawing board, and the Apollo project went from a progress at all costs to a human life first way of thinking. Their deaths were without a doubt the reason that the Apollo 13 astronauts survived their ill-fated days in space. And finally today in Salzburg, Austria in 1756, in a second floor apartment above a lovely little coffee shop that makes a fantastic Zakatorta, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart was born. By the age of five, yes five, he was competent on keyboard and violin and was composing directly onto sheet music paper. Just down the street from Mozart's childhood home stands the Cathedral of Saints Rupert and Virgilus. That church is one of very few in the world to have five separate functional organs which can all be played simultaneously. By the age of 17, Mozart was a professional musician and living a comfortable life in his hometown of Salzburg, but he was bored and he had no way of knowing that his life was already half over. He moved to the big city of Vienna and composed all of his truly great works at that time. All said and done, Mozart completed 600 works in his short life, and of course many of his most famous works, including the Great Requiem, were never fully finished during his life. Many of those works are acknowledged as the very best in the history of their particular genres. He died on the 5th of December in 1791, just a month or so before his 36th birthday. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.